Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Iowa Live. It is time to visit with one of our favorite people, Kim Bear, joining us right now as we are talking about something that uh, we have in common. We're both big animal lovers, uh, Kim. And question we have for you, Kim, is does your dog bite? <laughs> No, my dog does not bite. <laughs> <laughs> that is not my dog. Uh, Pink Panther reference there for those people that aren't familiar with it. But we're talking about dogs and uh, things that are associated with dogs that people really need to know about, right? Right, right. Well, you know, the weather's nice, so people are out walking dogs. So I thought maybe we'd just talk about, um, you know, what to do if you have a dog that bites or what to do if you or one of your family members has been bitten by a dog. And um, one of the things that people uh, have a misunderstanding about uh, in Iowa, I think, is they think that, that uh, the dog, if you get bitten by a dog, there's nothing you can do about it if this is the first time the dog's ever bitten anyone. And that really is just not the case. There's no what we call free bite in Iowa. So if a dog bites you, then the dog owner is generally liable. There are some exceptions, so. Okay, uh, you know, and does it have to be a considered a vicious breed or is it just any dog in general that happens to bite somebody? Just any dog in general. So if you're out walking with your dog and your dog attacks someone and bites them, um, you're going to be liable for those damages, most likely. Um, one of the exceptions I did want to mention is let's say that, that you have your dog in your yard and somebody comes into your yard. Maybe they're going to they're coming to deliver something or they're coming. Um, well, they're coming uninvited. I don't think the delivery example is a very good example, but let's say that, that you've got a bad actor and you've got somebody trespassing on your land. Yeah, somebody cut, maybe in. somebody cutting through your yard, for example. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Without your permission, if your dog then bites them, there is an argument that that person caused the bite. And so you, so you might not be liable for that bite. But pretty much if your dog bites someone, um, you need to you need to know that that you're going to probably be liable for those damages. Um, and sometimes these dog bite cases can be worth a lot of money, especially if they leave a scar, if it's a child, if you know, if you get bit, bit on the face. Um, so uh, one of the tips that we want to talk about with regard to dog owners is to make sure that you check your homeowner's insurance to see what's covered. Right, and back to the insurance, uh, are there special line items for people that do have dogs, or is that usually included in that? Well, it really depends policy to policy. I've seen some policies not cover dogs at all. I've seen some policies cover dogs, like, for instance, up to $10,000. But if you have a dog, you want to call your insurance agent, you can usually get a writer to cover your dog. Um, now, sometimes you can't get insurance if it's a specific type of dog. Uh, but that's that's a question for your insurance agent. So. Okay. okay, now you mentioned that uh, there's no such thing as a free bite uh, for a dog. So that's one of the things you have to remember in case uh, you are bitten by a dog is that you don't have to prove that the dog bit somebody before, right? Right, right. And, and oftentimes, you know, we hear from dog owners all the time, you know, uh, Susie, my dog, or Ralph, the dog, was the nicest dog, you know, and we, we didn't know that he would bite somebody. Um, and so, but that just doesn't really matter. Um, other than, um, now let's say that uh, there's a, um, it, it doesn't matter with regard to you being liable for, um, for that type of a, of a dog, uh, for the dog bite. But let's say now you're the dog owner. Um, if you are a dog owner of a dog who has been known to bite or is considered to be a high risk breed or what sometimes they, they call vicious dogs, uh, then there may be requirements that you already have to have. I mean, you may have to have a six foot fence. You may have to ha use a chain to walk your dog. You may have to have $100,000 of insurance. It uh, just depends city by city by city. So, um, so if you live in Des Moines, some of the things I just talked about apply to Des Moines. Uh, I'm not sure West Des Moines, Urbandale, Clive, you'll have to look at those city ordinances to see what's required. Okay, let's, let's talk about the fact, say you do have a, a six foot fence and you do have all the things you're supposed to have, but somebody still gets bitten. Um, does that six foot fence or anything, does that protect you in any way or it's a dog bite and you have to go through the procedure? 
Right. It's a dog bite and you have to go through the procedure unless the person was coming under your under your property uninvited. Um, and so just to clarify, so the only reason why it's important that you that you follow that ordinance is because you might might find yourself. Let's just say that I've got um, let's say I've got a, a Rottweiler or a pit bull mix or something like that. Um, and it is classified as a high risk dog under in Des Moines. And I live in Des Moines, but I've got the fence. I've got the insurance and I'm out walking the dog on a chain and the dog bites someone. Um, if I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, then I probably will not get a ticket. Ah, um, okay. So that's the point, that's the point. So, but I'm still gonna be liable for that dog bite. All right, so. let's talk about uh, just a little spin on what we're just talking about now. Uh, say say you have a dog, like it's a big dog that, that, that might be a little bit intimidating looking and somebody is jogging by your house and the dog gets out and they scare the person and they trip and they fall and they injure themselves. Is there any type of thing that the homeowner or the dog owner would have to be concerned about there? Well, uh, we'd have to look. Um, so a lot of times what our case law talks about is not just bites, but also attacks. So I guess the question would be, was that a dog attack? Even though you didn't get bitten, was the dog running after the person and scared them? And that's ah, why they fell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that that would be the question there. Yes. So, you know. And it doesn't just apply to dogs. I mean, sometimes people have mean cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been some big, vicious cats that have been out there, too. Let's not eliminate them from the conversation, right? Right, right, right. You know, so really, you know, and, and obviously there, are, you know, people like to have all sorts of things. They like snakes and hamsters and all of that. So you just need to be aware that, that you know, if you've got dogs, you've got issues. Uh, Kim, you know, let's seriously, let, let's, let's go back and visit with cats a little bit just for a couple seconds here. But say somebody comes over and they do get bit by your cat and people realize that cat bites are very very dangerous they can become infected really quickly and they have medical costs that come onto it is that um, something you need to be concerned about as well yeah you need to be re re concerned about that because what basically what it is Lou is someone's coming into your home what, you know if you have a friend and they come over to, to have a coke or a cup of coffee with you if they are injured in your home um, and it's by one of your animals you're most likely going to be responsible now you might be able to argue you know hey i told them not to that that cat's mean and to stay away from the cat or sometimes people will say you know i i told them not to pet my dog because my dog i knew my dog bit you know so then the question we kind of get into questions about well should the dog have been out maybe you should have put the dog away and so you know we we do kind of get into discussions about liability but you know, I, I think my message this morning for people is if you have a dog or a cat or a, a, you know some type of animal, you just need to be be aware that if that animal attacks or bites, you're very likely going to be liable for those damages. All so. right, so either if you have been bitten or you do have an animal that has bitten someone, uh, they wanna come and they wanna talk to you, Kim, can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we help both both sides, you know, and like I said, you said at the beginning, I'm an animal lover, you know, so uh, our job really uh, on this show is just to kind of educate people. So give us a call at uh, 279-2000. We're always happy to, to chat with you about whatever your problem is. Wonderful. So. Thank you, Kim. You have yourself a great afternoon and enjoy yourself for the remainder of the week. We'll talk to you next time. Okay. All right, buddy. Bye, okay, bye-bye.